All right, all right, all right. Today we are going to be looking at a beginner Zerg opening, guys. This is just a very safe and solid way for a Zerg player who is just starting out to play the game. It's a build order you can use in all three matchups, and it's just for the opening. So it gives you a solid foundation at the initial start of the game, and from there, you can jump into playing however you please. And that's a big part of any strategy game is you don't want to just be blindly following a build order um, or some sort of plan set out by someone else and never adapting to situations or experimenting and trying out all the cool different strategies that you should be. So I'm going to walk you guys through this basic opening. Now, in terms of building drones and overlords, it's not a big deal. This is something that you should always be focusing on. So if you are a brand new player, you should probably pause this video now, go search up Pig Daily episode number 16, hopping into 1v1 for the very first time, and I talk all about your most important things that you should be focusing on. For now though, guys, like I said, this is a good opening guide. It's going to get you up to three bases and keep you safe in all matchups. And to start off, we're going to build a 17 spawning pool. We're then going to drone back up to 17 supply. You'll notice how I'm doubling up my workers a little bit. That's not important if you're a beginner player. And I'm going to send a drone down to my natural to take a 17 hatchery. Now this is a pool before hatchery opening. And that's just going to mean you can build things like queens and zerglings a little bit earlier. So holding off any sort of rushes is going to be nice and easy. Now after this you want to build one more drone. That brings you back up to 17 supply. And then... You put down that gas. So 17 supply is always the supply you're at before the structure goes down. But because a drone disappears into each structure, you are going to be one supply lower right afterwards. Now after this, you just keep on droning up. You build a queen as soon as that spawning pool finishes. You put on your gas geyser as soon as it finishes here. I need to build an overlord because I'm almost supply blocked as you can see. I'm at 21 out of 22. And this is looking good. Just keep building drones. Now, you are going to want to build a bunch of Zerglings as well. You don't need to build them straight away when that spawning pool finishes. But soon after, here at about 22 supply, we are going to build six Zerglings. This is just to make sure we've got a few units to stop any early Reapers, Marines, or Zerglings that come over to our side of the map. Notice I've already queued up a second queen before this first one popped out. And the first queen, she will inject that main hatchery and then walk down to the natural. Now at 100 gas, let's start zergling speed. Let's get up to those six zerglings. I've only got two out so far. And here we go. Let's build a third queen as soon as our natural finishes. So we're going to go right up to three queens. I need another overlord. Notice I've got both of my hatcheries rallied to my natural because my main has 16 on minerals and three on gas. You can go up to 17 or 18 on minerals and that's no problem. Now from here, it's pretty generic, nothing too crazy, but we've got a moment of downtime. So I'm going to show you guys how my scouting should look. So I'm going to set those Zerglings up all over that map, make that look really, really nice. Now, ooh, 36 supply is when you're meant to go for defensive tech. So you're meant to choose a Roach Warren or a Baneling Nest based on your decision. I built that just a couple seconds late, but that's fine. It's not really a big deal. And you just keep on droning up. You keep injecting your hatcheries. And at 44 supply, here we are, we're at 44 supply, guys. That's when you go down to take that third base. Now, you'll notice I'm a little bit supply blocked, but I'm always building overlords. I'm not going to, like, wait to build the hatchery and then build overlords. You don't want there to be any long supply blocks. So you're going to see this hatchery is going to go down, and more overlords are going to pop out in just a second. And that's going to unsupply block me. Of course, your third queen, you can spread a bit of creep if you've got the APM for that. If you don't, no big deal. And this is basically your opening. As you hit 50 supply, oh, there we go. I've hit 50 supply. I can grab a lair and an evolution chamber. And I can grab two more gas geysers. So let's, let's take one of these ones in my main. And I can take one at my natural. And you'll notice I'm not really building any defensive units. We'll get to why I'm not doing that in just a moment. This is something which will take a little bit of getting used to. But it's something, as a Zerg player, if you want to be uh, learning how to play the game properly, it's something you do need to get used to, is not building units until you need them. Because that is one of the most important things as a Zerg player, is you want to try and uh, make sure you don't just mass units for no reason. 
Now check this out guys. Whoa, I've got those gases saturated. This base has got a few too many workers on it. But hey, the third's finished. So let's keep on droning up. And this is basically it guys. This is the opening. That's it. I'm, I'm done. From here, you can mass units, you can finish droning up and taking gases, you can go banelings, hydras, whatever the hell you want, mutalisks. That's it, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna pause this game real quick. We're gonna bring the camera back to me and I'm gonna very quickly talk about a couple of other things to finish up. This is gonna be a very quick video. Um, I've, got, I've got my notes on my second monitor here, so I'm just consulting them. Yeah, so basically from here, there's going to be a lot of details to the game. This is not just like, oh, you automatically win games with this. This is an opening. What this does is it gets you three bases. It gets you a good drone count in an efficient manner. It gets you up your defensive buildings, like your spawning pool very early at the start, and then your roach warren or baneling nest. So you've got everything you need to defend any sort of attack from your opponent. And as you play the game, you'll learn to identify what you need to spot, to build units and so on and so forth. The main thing you should be thinking about though is what keeps you safe. I was talking about, you know, if I'm only got a few Zerglings from the early game, what was keeping me safe here in this particular game? Let's go back in game. And let's take a look around for just a moment. Now, you're gonna see my mini map down here in the bottom left-hand side of the screen. Watchtowers, I've got a Zergling on each one of those. I've got Zergling outside the base. I've got overlords outside the base and I've got overlords kind of around the map as well and around my bases especially. This is what keeps you safe. It's your map vision. It's your map control. So let's go into game and let's actually talk about that very quickly. So this is something where just getting used to splitting off scouts, leaving some units around the map is great. And if you see your opponent push out, let's imagine a big army were to push out right now. That's when you go, oh, we got to stop building drones. Let's build roaches. And I can start massing up my roaches. And the reason that works is because Zerg production is so explosive. As long as you're building an economy well enough and then you see them leave the base, you go, oh, let's imagine that's 20 stalkers right now. By the time they get to my base, look at this. Look at how many units are popping out. It's just like, whoa, holy crap. And you can actually hang on. Now, don't get me wrong. You can't just build 100 drones forever, but you can always build up to about 50 drones. And unless they are really cheesing you, they're not going to be able to kill you. So guys, you can always go up to fully saturated base in your main with both gases. One gas at your natural, fully saturated there, and a good little handful of drones on your third. So once you do this efficiently, you can do this pretty much every game if your opponent's playing normal or doing normal things. And that's where everything gets a little bit interesting once again, because we need to talk about a couple of very small notes to keep you safe and solid when you're first learning this out. Now, as a beginner player, you don't need to be super advanced with this stuff, but you just want to start going through the motions. So we already talked about lings and overlords, watching the map, watching around your base. Awesome, that gives you forward warning. Um, the next thing is if you see a large attack moving out or you see your opponent moving out, you always want to then build enough units to kill them. So even if it's only a few units coming across the map, you build just, okay, there's a few stalkers coming across build 20 zerglings or build build a few roaches. Basically just build up a whole bunch of units and you need to push out, kill their army as soon as you think you're able to engage it and then reestablish that map vision and go back to droning. And this is the flow of zerg. It's what it's all about because your workers come out of the same thing that builds your army units. You always want to focus on workers, workers, workers. But the moment your opponent starts pushing onto the map and really pressuring you, that's where you need to say, whoa, whoa, okay, I've just got to build army units. And the goal with those army units is to push him back into his corner of the map. As the Zerg, you control the map. You're the one who sees everything and you can react to them only when they're pushing you. And that's what allows you to win your games. If you just sit in your dark corner of the map, you're not really going to be able to uh, figure that out. So definitely get good at your map control. Uh, you can check out, check out my Fundamentals of StarCraft Daily, episode number 10 as well. There's a whole bunch of information there about how to split your scouts on the map and all the different techniques for doing that. So guys, that's awesome. The final couple of points that you want to look at, we'll go back in game very quickly for those, is you want to scout your opponent's natural at three minutes. And you want to say, okay, my early first Zergling. And if there's no Nexus there at three minutes, no Command Center, no Hatchery, all you want to do is you want to say, oh, he's only on one base still. Build units, build units. Forget the plan, forget the build order. Just build units. That's all I need to do. Oh shit, you know, just mass units. Because he's only on one base and you're going to be on two base with plenty of drones by that point. The other thing you, you really want to get used to doing is always sending an overlord through their base at about the four minute mark. And that's just going to be beautiful. If you send this overlord just through the base, see what's going on, 
and that's going to give you an idea of what's happening. Also, if you're ever confused or you're unsure what your opponent's doing, you know what you do? You can always just grab a Zergling out of your army, and you can just send it in and say, what army does he have? And we can say, oh, okay, he's going Zealots and Observers, because I'm playing a very easy AI, and it's really dumb. But you don't need to have any hardcore reactions to any scouting at all. Not until you get up to Gold League and above. All you need to do is build army units when they push out, so that you can push them back off the map and you can go back to workers. Get used to spending your money efficiently, building workers, swapping into army production, and then going back to workers. That's what learning Zerg and learning good macro is all about. Awesome. That's going to be it, guys. I think that's going to wrap us up. Uh, yeah, I think I answered everything. What else? Um, oh, if you're worried about invisible or flying units, I should answer that one as well. This was one one question which always comes up. Just drop a spore crawler at each base at four minutes, but no earlier than four minutes, unless you've actually seen like a dark shrine or something like that that's worrying you. But four minutes will 99% of the time keep you safe. So don't drop any detection until then, but four minutes, just do that. And once you get better at the game, you'll actually learn to identify when you can skip that and when you need it. But no earlier than four minutes or it will really hurt your economic buildup. I see way too many beginners just putting down detection because they're worried about invisible units or flying units way too early on. Um, all right, guys. So remember, there's abs there's no absolute guide um, to win you every game. Your opponents are intelligent people. They're going to be working hard. You're not going to just automatically win your game. StarCraft's a learning process. It's it's hard. It's difficult. Um, your opponent's going to try just as hard to beat you are as you are to beat them. So it's you know that pure one v one competition. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Be critical. Uh, look for things to learn. And there's no guide that teaches you everything. You always need to go into every StarCraft game with an open mind, watch your replays, try different things, figure out how it all works. Um, all right, guys, so that's going to finish this up. Please send in replays for this week's I cast your freaking awesome replays challenge. So send me in your replays using Siege Tactics and Siege Warfare. And uh, hopefully your replays will get cast. Um, information is in the YouTube description below. So send me that info there. That's all for now, guys. Don't forget to hug a watermelon, kick a walrus, and of course, punch a garden gnome in the gonads. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye and good night.